Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with our fourth match of the day. This is day four of qualifiers for the WPA Players Championship here at Grips Billiards in beautiful Las Vegas. I'm joined alongside Jason Kane. How are you, buddy? Okay, buddy. We've got Gabe Owen versus Dean Goddard here. This is going to be a race to five. Alternating break. One racked up front, the nine racked in the middle. The rest do not matter. We will have a three foul rule and a three point break rule in effect for this match and all matches. Gabe Owen won the lag, which is very important in such a short race to five, alternate breaks, Moscone Cup style format. Gabe Owen, 2004 US Open champion, 15 years ago. And he finished second in the same event, US Open in 2005 and 2007. A lot of experience, top player. Yes, he is. He's got a very nice resume. Let's see how he breaks. Nice very, cue ball. Very well controlled cue ball. Made a ball, made a two ball. And a one. Yeah, he's got a shot, I think. You can see part of it. I don't know if mm. he can see all of it. Let's see how Gabe handles this. If it goes, obviously, we're going to see him attempt to be aggressive and run out. If not, I look for him to play a safety of some sort. Hit it too hard. Trying to play safe there. Trying to find cover behind the three and the eight ball. Overshot it by a little bit. We're gonna get to see a little bit of Dean here. Dean Goddard is from London, England. And prior to this event, he hadn't played pool in 10 years. Oh, wow. And the last time he played, ironically enough, was at the Riviera here in Las Vegas. Rest in peace to the Riviera. Did you know that I lived over two years of my life in that hotel? I did not know that. <laughs> two years straight? No. I used to come here from New York City and stay over a month at a time for many, many years, and it add up, added up to over two years. Wow. Uh, Could have the, bought a house. <laughs> all the pool tournaments, back to back to back. Yeah. Bar table tournaments in that hotel. Good old days. So it gave us a good opportunity here to get things started. Wide open shot on the one ball, the three sitting pretty nicely. Unexpected miss there by Gabe. Yeah. Didn't, didn't expect him to miss that ball. He missed it pretty good, too. And left a shot for Dean. He did. Speaking of the Riviera, back in 2006 or 2007, Dean Goddard finished in the final 12 of the World Summit Tournament, the Riviera. He wasn't sure if it was 2006 or 2007, so one of the two. He had 
hasn't played in 10 years or so. What happened there? Oh, I thought he feathered the cube all the way he got up now. Dean and Gabe actually played um, in New York 10 or 11 years ago. And Gabe came out on top by a score of 11 to 10. Oh. And Dean Goddard gave me an interesting piece of information. He actually played that nine ball match with a snooker cue against Gabe. Dean uh, got out of line on the purple four there, so I had to uh, elect to play safe. I was looking before the match. Gabe Owens a 727 Fargo, and Dean does not have any uh, information in the system yet. It's flying under the radar. Yes, he is. For now. He'll have uh, some stats put in the system when this event is done. He told me before the match he feels like he can beat anyone in the world if he's on his A game. And he followed that up by saying that he doesn't have a B game. It's pretty bold. His C, t his C game might not be too good, though. <laughs> Says his favorite aspect is pocketing balls. God, did you jinx him? Here, let's see. No. Uh, no? He survived the jinx. <laughs> Plays fast as well, it looks like. Yeah, he doesn't waste any time, does he? A little elevated here. He's taking no time to just get down on it and fire it up in the corner. Nice shot. He did, uh, he did mention he doesn't have any big major titles or anything worth quote unquote bragging about on his resume. Not yet. Not yet. He's very excited to be back playing pool again. And quickly takes a 1-0 one, one lead over Gabe Owen, and he will be breaking in rack two. So we'll get a good look at Mr. Goddard's break. I always like to analyze players from different backgrounds. For example, Goddard has a snooker background is where he started. He didn't originally learn rotational or, or eight ball pool. So I always try to analyze it and kind of watch the break for somebody who's taken rotation on as a second or third discipline and not their original discipline. See how he's been, how he's adapted to the game. Yeah, I talked with Dean, uh, I think the day before yesterday or yesterday. He's buddies with Dale Smith, who played on the TV table a couple of days ago. Dale Smith, also known as Delvis, he's, uh, has an Elvis show. I said he looked like Elvis when we were commentating. When I get home, I Google him. He is, he is an Elvis impersonator. I mean, <laughs> I, he looks like Elvis. I mean, I wish I knew that information before. But uh, both lovely guys. Let's see. How he does this? Nothing. Two ball, maybe? Good contact on the cue ball. Yeah. Nothing fell. I see he's uh, not playing with a snooker cue today. We'll see how Gabe attacks rack number two here. It's tough to be aggressive. Given where the six ball is, you can't play this to the upper left. And I think playing it to the upper right invites a scratch into play, or could. So we may see him just kind of play a stop shot and leave that cue ball behind the six. Take the one back down table near the two and the five for coverage. He may be looking to take on the bank shot. 
he might also be looking, you know that stop shot safety, he's, uh, maybe he's making sure he doesn't make the one off the two by mistake and then hook himself. Could be as well. Oh, he's going for the bank. He went all out for it. Look at that. Wow. What a great shot. Wow. wow he what a great shot. He would have sold out if he missed, so he yeah. went all out, yeah. He was confident. He was. He's a former Derby City Classic One Pocket Champion 2008, so he should be good at banking. It's the first opportunity I've ever s had to uh, to meet Gabe in person and see him play in person. I've seen him, you know, on videos and obviously heard stories over the years, but it's been a pleasure to to meet the man. Oh, look at this! And watch him play in person. Oh, I, uh, did it get locked up? Yes, it did. He's married to that six. As ball. soon as he hit it, he knew. He put his hands up early. He knew where that was going. One revolution. One revolution too far. So uh, Gabe's going to be forced to kick here. Tough shot to gauge. It's not the toughest of hits, but he wants to either leave distance or pocket a ball. He's done pretty well for what he had there. Absolutely. Leaving Dean a long, tough shot. We need to see the other angle in a minute. We may end up seeing a 7-9 combination yeah. to finish this rack. We could see it. I don't know if he can. I can't tell. Can he get into the 9? Can he hit the 3 into the 9 now? Or start the cue ball? Some two rails? Yeah, he could probably. The cue ball into the, the, cue ball into the 9 now? He could probably send the, the 3 ball toward the upper right as you're looking yeah. at the screen. Put some. Maybe a touch of top or a touch of right hand spin on the cue ball and send it, the cue ball around toward the nine. That's certainly a possibility. He's lucky oh, he to just go made the other it. Way. Wow, good, good, good shot there to make that ball. And he said pocketing balls is his, his best part of his game and his favorite part of his game. So far we've seen him, we're only a rack and a half in and we've seen him come with two or three pretty tough Pretty tough pots. Another tester right here. Handles it beautifully. I don't know. Yeah, beautiful. He's a good player, this guy. Yes, he is. I'm a little bit surprised that he doesn't have more on his resume than he's expressed to us. Well, I suppose, like, oh, we got him. He, was in, he said he hasn't played for 10 years. Is that what he time. said earlier? Yeah. So yeah. he's been in the wilderness. And, for, you know, there's nothing in the system. Where's Gabe at? Oh, there he is. Well, the 7-9 is on offer, but I, I wouldn't be extremely surprised to see Gabe spin this two, possibly three rails, and come between the, the 7 and the 9 with the cue ball. He's got two options. It's whatever he's most comfortable with. A natural path brings him to the short side of the eight, but the more tempting shot would be to stay above the seven. Excuse me, short side of the seven. He elected to stay above it. He'll be playing a seven nine combination. Got the eight ball there as a little bit of a helper. Perfect. That was a big miss six ball by Dean. Yeah. Could have taken a 2 0 lead. Instead, gives Gabe a rack back, and we are tied at one apiece, and Gabe will be breaking off in rack number three. Gabe was also uh, on the 2004 USA winning Moscone Cup team. He had a good year. Was that the same year he won the US? Yeah, 2004 was the same year he won the US Open. He had a good year in 2004. My guess is that US Open win helped him get his spot onto that Moscone Cup team. Certainly didn't hurt. Yeah. 
Gabe missed the one ball in the first game and lost it. He hooked himself from the two to the three ball in the second game and got away with it because Dean missed that six. Good cue ball again. Excellent cue ball. Got kicked, but perfect. Corner ball, or wing ball fired right into the corner, and he is left with a dream layout. Wow. Absolutely perfect. I think uh, three to the four. I was just about to say, the only thing is three to the four, maybe. Three to the four is going to be a little bit, could be a little bit of a tester, just because of where the eight ball is. Ideally, if he could get the eight, or the cue ball where the eight is right now, he'd be perfect. But yeah. We'll see what he does here. Looking at he may be looking at the, combo. that 3-9 combination. Mm, uh, I don't think so. From that angle, I'm not taking it on. Yeah, he's got a small window to land after this. Well, makes a one and after the two ball. Let's see how he attacks this. Tucking his shirt in, making sure he doesn't touch a ball accidentally. We are playing all ball fouls. So if his shirt or clothing or in the case of the women, if their hair end up touching any of the object balls, it is a foul. I think a woman in the World Championship on a big tournament, Hill Hill, her hair touched a ball and she lost. I, s I seem to remember some a similar story. She gave ball in hand. It was, uh, it was like the last ball. Of ball uh, unbelievable. Spin this around two, possibly three rails. That third one, he needs it to slow down. He overhit it, yeah. He overcooked it. He's over hit, he overhit a couple of shots now. Still has a, a chance. Super thin cut or bank. I don't know, the bank might not go. We've seen that a lot with this table. Players over running position. I think this table plays just a little bit quicker than the rest. It's got a few more lights over it. It's got some cameras around it. Got a few more spectators around it. I think he's gonna thin cut this in three rails. Take take four ball in the corner. Four ball in the lower right. Yeah. Yeah, take the cue ball over by the upper side pocket. Yeah, kind of ways. He's looking where the, he's gonna head over there. Where the chalk is, a cue ball will end up, I think. Or not. It could end up in there. Simultaneous. Much thinner than I thought. Yeah, yeah that was a lot. I thought it was going to hit it with bottom and it just kind of spin over, but it was hard enough to make the shot. Another big chance for Dean. Gabe's made a mistake in each of these games so far. Yeah, good opportunity for, for Dean to take the lead again, and he'll be breaking in rack number four. I mean, we see mistakes earlier and now. I mean, these players, this is their last chance to qualify down. There's so much pressure, so it's understandable. I like the pace that Dean plays with. Fast and loose. Clearly a snooker background. Look at that stance. Beautiful. Snooker players typically have a, a more of a open stance than your typical rotation or eight ball pool player. I like his composing himself, even though it's an easy shot, just making sure he's settled. Nice, stayed down, made the ball. 2 1 to Dean Goddard. Folks, we're coming to you live from Griff's Billiards here in beautiful Las Vegas. Had a few sponsors that we'll mention now, a few more that we'll mention. Throughout the course of the match, we want to say thank you to, of course, the Rio Hotel and Casino, Predator Cues, How Tips, H O W, check them out. 
course, diamond tables. And these beautiful new Cyclop Hyperion pool balls, which we'll get some good camera angles of, I'm sure. Very beautiful, vibrant pool balls. A unique design on the new nine ball. Other sponsors as well. We will touch on them throughout the course of this match, but thank you to those mentioned. Well, he drew that ball quite a bit. That counts. I get the option, right? No, 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 that counts. So what is, what is my option? He made a ball, one ball went over and came back. If I pass it, then you can't push, you've got to kick. That was a legal break, I don't know. I'm not sure. We, yeah, the ref's coming over right now. Unfortunately, we can't get involved. No, no, that was legal though. One of the balls came in and out of the thing. It depends on a seven ball. If that ball isn't over, I think a little bit has to be over, That would then it would be illegal. But it looks to me that a seven ball. I believe it's the base of the ball. So oh, it's, so it might not be then. Even so, it still looks as though it's a cross. I think a def I, he made a ball, and one ball went in and out of the. the you can do an illegal break. Right right See if we can hear. Nothing happens here. Right? No, not really. What if I had a shot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I suppose. I think uh, they're both in agreement that it was an illegal break, but I don't think it was an illegal break. Not sure. It's tough to tell. But we did get the ref on there, and the players. And refs all I came suppose to there's nothing you can do if, if both players think it's illegal. Yeah, they, they came to an agreement. He's allowed to push out, though, because he's the original player. So There's no arguments or discrepancies about it. They just wanted a little clarification yeah. on the rule. I mean, that's what he would have done anyway, because he was hooked. So it doesn't really change anything. No. It would have only changed something if Gabe was straight in on the one. Yeah, if Gabe would have had then a it, shot. Then it would have been a big mistake. Then it changes things, yeah. yes. See how Gabe handles this here. I kind of like just playing the one to the upper left and using the six ball to kill my cue ball. And then play the two to the lower right. It's a tall order, but it's certainly on offer. Cue ball. Wow, he's not playing so well this match. I think that's, I think he was trying for what I had mentioned, but he jumped up and jumped. steered a little bit. Another big chance. Now there's three ball and nine. We're, we're not sure. I wonder if he'll shoot the one right now to move the nine. This is a good, better angle here for us to see. He gets, a, leaves the cue ball, yeah, like that, above the one. He can drift down into the nine and or three. Create the separation that he needs and still leave himself a couple of options for the two. Yep, good call, Ben. It's a good shot there. A tight pocket here in the side. I think it's the right shot uh, to play it in the side. Unless the three does pass the nine to the left, which I believe it does as well. But he does have a couple options here. Yeah, he's going corner, I think. Yes. Very nice, nice shot. Nice control. Might be, he'll have to play the purple four in the opposite corner, I think, with the angle he has. Up table? Yeah, up top table. Left. I think so. Just float forward, follow forward, and leave it down here. We can't tell exactly from the mo we're looking at the monitor as well, but I think that's what he's going to do. Looks like he is rolling forward there. Good yeah. call. Bounce a little bit. Didn't really want to have this angle, but sh still should be okay. Yeah, I'd fancy him to make this. Hey, you're using some English I'm, I'm terms. He fancies him to make this, he says. Hanging out with you guys is rubbing off a little yeah, bit. I like that. You'll be saying he's going to go two cushions <laughs> in a minute. Yeah, I caught myself using the word pot earlier instead of pocket. Ah. I've got a nickname for you. You're the lean, mean, potting machine. I like it. <laughs> I was thinking about that. <laughs> I've been called much worse. 
Oh, a little close to the action. Wow, yeah. look at that. I understand why he played that with left yeah. spin and not right. Yeah, because, yeah, definitely. You want to go in a wide space, open space, instead of that. Yeah, the wow. cue ball kind of checked up and came right back toward the six rather than away from it. That's, that's a big mistake. I mean, he's still got a chance, but. I see him. He pulled the bridge out with a rest. And uh, I imagine he's pretty handy with one of those, given his snooker background. He's going for the thin cut. There's option of playing safe here, but he wants to stay at the table. No, that... It sounded funny, didn't it? It almost sounded like a miscue to me, anyhow. Oh, that was not good. So that's the he, second six ball he's missed. Yeah, well, he should have been up 4 nothing. He's going to be 2-2, two -two most likely. He could have played the up and down safe once he got out of line there and snooker behind the seven and sent the six down here by the nine. But, I, you know, that's his choice. He went for the shot. He has to be careful, Dean Goddard. He does not want to wake the sleeping giant here in Gabe Owen. No, he doesn't. Nobody has to like that match. That guy wakes up and puts it together. He's hanging with the best in the world. Yeah, Gabe, I mean, if he can qualify, he can actually do some damage in the main tournament. You yeah, know, absolutely. He, I think he can beat anyone on his, on his day. Stage two of this event starts tomorrow. We will play this qualifier down to the final four players. Those four players will be brought back and invited into stage two, which starts tomorrow. And there's $50,000 added to that event. So that's what these guys are out here trying to accomplish. Yeah, I'm looking forward to stage two. We're going to have some excellent matches. Yes, it's going to be an amazing four days of pool. And, then and those are longer matches, aren't they, Ben? Correct. Um, all those stage two matches are races to seven, aside from the semifinals and the finals, which are a race to nine. Another unique tidbit about that stage two is all matches are win by two. So that's going to be pretty fun. There is a maximum number of games that can be played. So, I mean, obviously, win by two could potentially go on forever. Um, there is a maximum number of games. Cue ball. Oh, wow. wow. Dean's shooting every game. Unfortunate break there from Gabe. You feel Dean has to get out here or it, it, he could go down in flames because he keeps getting these chances. He has to take advantage of this one to get that lead back. any time. No, sir. I love that pace. Oh, no. This is not going to be good. I don't love the pace of the cue ball. Oh, it's such a wide window again to go further up. You don't... You, you, oh. oh. Another, another big mistake. This is the third big mistake we've seen from Goddard. We've seen two missed six balls and a, a missed easy positional play here on the four. Fairly easy. That last missed six was, as we were saying, though, he didn't go into that wide open window. He went too close to his work, and that caused a miss. Well, he made a good hit. Let's see if he gets us a what break. He's left a long shot, but Gabe's favored for sure. Gabe might be feeling the heat a little bit. See him wiping his brow. It's nice and cool in here, so I think it's a mental thing. Maybe on the lights it's a little hotter. All those TV lights, maybe. Well, I know even in, in 
when I'm playing and I'm in a situation like this where my adrenaline's pumping and I'm in an important event, it could be ice cold in the room and I might still have a little sweat on my brow. Yeah, yeah I, I, I'm always hot when I'm playing. You see Gabe taking a little extra caution there to tuck in the front of his shirt. We are playing all ball fouls and if he was to accidentally brush up against the nine ball with his shirt, even if the nine didn't move. Any contact whatsoever is a foul. Good draw stroke there from Gabe. Gives himself a, just a nice little angle to drift down naturally for the nine ball. So what could have been a 4-0 possibly even 5-0 victory for Goddard has now turned into a 3-2 lead for Mr. Gabe Owen. Gabe Owen is one gentleman you do not want to give breathing room to. Especially that fly he just caught. Yeah, Dean's not happy. He's got to pull himself together, try and tie this match up. He's had all the chances. He's going to be annoyed with himself. Good look at Dean breaking off here in rack number six. He's opted to switch sides of the table. He's been breaking from the lower side of your screen, the left side now. He's opted to switch to the made right. The made the four ball. Let's see. I just received word that our, oh, let me, <laughs> give me a second before I give you some false info. Make sure it's not the, our 5 p.m. match is gonna be Ian Costello versus Jeremy Jones. I'm trying to figure out who our next match on this table is going to be. Jeff DeLuna versus Chris McDaniel. Oh, that's a good match. Yes, sir. Jeff DeLuna. God, this guy lost in the last match each day so far to qualify. Can he get it done today? Dean Goddard. Hit that one 100 miles an hour, but. Oh, was he going to leave? Yeah, he's going to leave the one. No, maybe. Yeah, he, he did leave an, enough to make the one for Gabe or play a safety behind these balls. Yeah, Gabe could play a really mean safety right here. There's yeah. a lot of distance to travel. Um, and a, cue ball to control at the same time, but if he could lock him up behind that five, it'd be a dagger in Goddard. I'm excited for all these matches coming up, but I'm particularly excited to see the Jeremy Jones, a buddy of mine, and I'm glad to see that he made it out. He didn't play in the first three days of qualifiers. He said, I'm just going to give it one shot on day four. He's already won his first match or two of the day. Gabe slightly hooked, has some mass say a little bit to get on the blue two. Hit it, but left it, sold out. 
That was a problem that one ball shot where he elected to go for it. You know the cue ball's going to smash into the balls and might get hooked, and he got hooked. Might have been better to miss the ball and play the safety. But what do I know? <laughs> I'm sat here. It's easier to see from back here when you're commentating. I don't miss when I'm commentating. <laughs> need to correct what I had just said. Jeremy actually caught a bye in the first round, so his 5 p.m. match will be his first match of the day against local player Ian Costello. Oh, that's a good match. Ian Costello can play. Yes, he can. I call Ian the silent assassin because he doesn't say much, but he's a killer. Hey, this is his uh, his bogey ball, his six ball. Yeah, let's and see. And he's got out of line on him in the game a little bit. See how he handles it here. I tell you, this is it. This is going to be the test of one. Oh, he's jacking up. He's going to fire this in. He's missed the six ball again. If he hit it hard, it would have gone back down. It may, yeah. It, oh, Dean. He's left a golden opportunity for Gabe Owen to put the set away. Not, not in this game, but this will put Gabe on the hill. And I believe Gabe will be breaking next. So if Gabe can convert these and lay down a good break, there's a chance Mr. Dean Goddard won't be back to the table. He'll never want to see that six ball again in his life. And after the way this match started and what could have, what we thought could have potentially been, has turned it around big time. It looked as though Dean was gonna run away with this. Gabe's got something to say about that. Nice shot with the rest there from Gabe. Gets himself on the proper side of the seven. Good here, Gabe. Yes, he is. Two options, both personal preference. He could go forward with a touch of inside, or he could use a little bit of left and spin two rails, both accomplishing the same thing. He opted to spin and actually take a third rail into play and brought himself into perfect position to put himself on the hill. So we've seen another match with some big swing in it. Gabe Owen now on the hill breaking against Dean Goddard. As you can see, folks, we were playing on nine foot diamond tables with that beautiful green Andy 988 cloth and these awesome new Cyclop brand Hyperion pool balls. This event is also excuse me, sponsored by Master Chalk, Predator Q's, the Rio Hotel and Casino, How Tips, and of course, Q Sports International and the World Pool Billiard Association, CSI and the WPA, collaborating to bring you this event with the help of those mentioned sponsors. Thank you so much. I'm looking behind me, all the, the WPA staff here, the president of the WPA is here, Ian Anderson. W, the World Pool Billiard Association, formed in 1987, is the international governing body of pool. I was two. In 1987? Mm -hmm. I was up to no good in 1987. <laughs> I was 16, 17. I can't say much more, but up to no good. <laughs> Fair enough. I think we were all 16 or 17 at one point. He may have made some different decisions, but... <laughs> We're here now to talk about it, or think about it. Let's see. So Gabe, Gabe leading four to two on the hill, breaking off here in rack seven. Kept a good cue ball, got kicked, made a ball. Wing ball fired in the hole, cue ball got parked and then kicked. And he's left with no shot on the one ball. No aggressive shot, I should say. Might be able to cut it down there, we just can't see. 
I think he's completely hooked. He might be able to see a little bit of paint there. Marina and I got close to together a couple of times now down here. They're stuck there. And that's I've something, seen that. that's something these should think about on this particular shot, too, because there, there may be a 3-9 carom. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's on offer. If there is, that may influence this particular shot here. Okay, he, offered, he opted to push out, which I like. I think if the 3-9 wasn't there, he may have kicked the one, tried to kick it down table, and leave the cue ball up table. I could be wrong. Maybe he would have gone for the push either way. Dean just said he got down quickly there, so I'm going to give it a go. Might be a little frustrated with himself. Yeah, Dean with, with a couple of crucial mistakes. You can tell that Dean's a good player. It just didn't work, work out for him today. Yeah, absolutely. Well, well not, not yet. It's not over. Yeah. Say, let's not throw dirt yeah. on, his, on his grave yet, but... Yeah, Gabe's making mistakes. He got away with this one, I think. So if that billiard's on, he can just make this two come out to the middle of the table. I don't think it is from this angle, though. The nine's too low, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Maybe the three ball goes as he's looking at it, and then he's just playing normal out. Watch out for the side pocket here, or the cue ball. Jumped up. He jumped up, but um, I noticed that he jumped up. He had already come through. He had finished the shot. I think he jumped up because he knew he missed it. I don't think he jumped out of yeah. out of the shot it itself. It was like after the shot kind of thing. I think it was after the shot. He realized as soon as he impacted the cue ball that he had missed the shot. So I think I think just the natural reaction was to was to jump up. He had finished the shot at that point. Um, He's such a big guy. You just see him jumping. You think, oh, yeah, jumped up. But yeah. You, yeah, Gabe's probably about 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, At least, yeah. Tall man. I don't look up to too many people physically. And What are you, 6? I'm about 6'3", 6'2", 6'3". Depending on the pair of shoes, I suppose. Now, let's see what Dean Goddard is doing here. No referees watching. He's just going to smash it. Just like that. No one's had a look. No one's got time. Go to the shooter. Thank you. That's what I do in the league. They're like just get up uh, there and fire before yeah, they get a chance. They're to say about anything. to look at something, and I've just hit, I've hit it already. And they're like, "Wait!" I said, "Oh, too late." It was good. <laughs> that was a good hit, though. A legal hit, should I say? I don't believe the four passes the six into no. the upper right as you're looking at your screen now. So he's going to be shooting into what we call kind of a blind pocket. A Missed pocket it. that's out of his vision. Missed it by about a diamond and a half. That might have been his last shot. If that five goes on his side. If not, he can just draw it back the other corner for the five. Yeah, he's got a few, few options here. He could kind of just kill it there and play the five on the side. He could draw underneath it and play it into either upper corner of your screen. It's all a matter of Gabe's personal preference. Stand it over into the rail. He'll be playing the five to the left side. We may even see him play the six to that same pocket. I think the nine ball's gonna s slow down the path of the cue ball here. Not the best angle he's got, but he can work with it. Nice shot. He 
keeps himself perfect for the six ball. Ideally, I, well, it doesn't matter if he leaves himself straight or leaves himself some angle on the seven. He can play with the rails if he wants to, or if he leaves himself straight, he can just draw straight back up. Looks like he has landed pretty straight, so I think he can just snatch this ball straight back, straight back toward him, and take the set down. These two balls, the former US Open champion, Gabe Owen, he's still on course to do a Tiger Woods. <laughs> Big congratulations to Tiger. Sounded like a bit of a miscue, it or miss something happened. It certainly did. Yeah, he's looking at his tip immediately and scuffing it. He's got a scuffer in his pocket. Maybe he had problems that, early in the tournament with that's that or strong. something. Yeah. So after a miscue, which at this point I would call it fortunate to have pocketed that seven ball. I mean, to miscue and still pocket a ball in your intended pocket is, is pretty good fortune. He did not get anywhere near the position that he wanted due to that miscue. Um, but I still fancy him to make this. We saw him win a match yesterday with an absolutely incredible nine ball shot, full table, much, much tougher than this one. Made it, game over. Gabe Owen takes down Dean Goddard by a score of five to two. Good showing for Dean, nice try. There's Jeff DeLuna Congra about to come up next. Congratulations, congratulations to Gabe Owen. Next up we're gonna have Jeff DeLuna versus Chris McDaniel. We will be back in 12 minutes. I'm Ben Sutherland, joined alongside Jason Kane. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll be back shortly.